So let's use a function that will do all of these steps for us, including the disentangling of the seasonal from the irregular data and see what it gives us. So I'm gonna start a new variable called fit add for fitting the, an additive decomposition model. We're gonna use a function from base R called decompose. We're gonna give it our time series object and dvi.ts, which contains our observed data. And we're gonna specify that the type of decomposition we want it to conduct is additive. And now you know what that means. Let's run it and then let's plot what we just generated. Plot fit add. And so we have this pretty graph. Um, give me a second and I'm gonna make it bigger for you on the screen. All right, that's better. What we have here now is on the top panel is our observed data. So this is what we've been plotting all along. On the next panel down is our trend, which is what we've been calculating using a moving average. And you can see it looks very similar. It looks bigger, um, but keep in mind that these, these scale bars on the left are changing from panel to panel. So we're really kind of very zoomed in on that trend uh, as it's moving around through time. Our third panel now is that seasonal signal, and it's the seasonal signal without the irregular fluctuations involved. And then at the bottom is that random signal. Those are regular fluctuations in the data that cannot be accounted for through either our attempt to find the long-term trend via the moving average or the fitting of the seasonal signals. This looks basically what we would expect to see. Um, you'll notice I want to pull your attention again to the fact that at the beginning and the end of the time series, we're losing those big chunks because of the size of our moving window. The seasonal signal is giving us something that looks like a seasonal signal in the system. Uh, we tend to have two peaks of greenness. One is the, the really strong summer peak where we get big flushes of green in the system. And then the other, that smaller peak that you're seeing is a weaker winter signal. Um, so we have two growing seasons, one occurring at the rainy, at the end of the rainy season in the winter, and the other one that occurs during the summer with these uh, big summer monsoonal rains. And we're picking up that dynamic in the, in the system. And so that's great. Except if you're an ecologist and you have done field work or you've worked with a lot of data, there's something about that seasonal signal that should really be setting your hair on end right now. It looks creepy, doesn't it? Ecology doesn't look like that. It doesn't have these regular oscillations that are the same year after year after year. That should be a signal to you that there's something going on under the hood that is probably not actually reflective of, uh, of reality. Most time series uh, decomposition approaches have an underlying assumption that the seasonal signal is the same over time. And we'll do this, there's a variety of different ways it could be doing this. Uh, a common one is to simply take the average July across all of the years and assume that that's the value that you should be seeing. Um, and it will then extract that as your seasonal signal um, are these mean values for each one of your months or sample units um, in your time series. And then from that, it will then extract anything that's different from this same signal, signal in the seasons over and over and over again, that will be what becomes your regular signal in your time series. But in ecology, especially with global climate change, we may have questions about whether or not our seasonal signal has been staying the same over time. The good news is there's another approach that has a more flexible, uh, that is more flexible with the seasonal signal, but it is also more complicated to use, and we'll explore that next.